What's up, everybody? Welcome to Bill Nob Power. This is Gabby. And KT. And we're back with another episode. Thank you, everybody, for checking out our last one entitled Silence is Violence. If you would like to donate to the work we are doing in the community, you can do so. Uh, just this evening, we put some groceries in the pantry. Actually, somebody had just filled it up to the brim like an hour ago and posted it, and literally it was all gone. So, yeah, it was gone the very um, like next hour. Yeah, so there's definitely a need in the community. If you'd like to help us with stocking the fridge, you can do so. Link is in the description. If you'd like to join us in person, you can do so. Link is in the description. All right, guys, we are going to um, go back to reading Black Arm Joy next week. Uh, but today we wanted to talk about, you know, some recent events that's happened uh, in our city. Uh, but we want to tie it to a bigger conversation on just the pervasiveness and um, the overtness of fascism in this country, you know, that, that nobody wants to talk about. So, KT, will you uh, open up the discussion? Yeah, so um, this week, Memphis had a, uh, a murder that happened. This lady, basically, she was on her jog, and she ended up getting murdered by this guy. The thing is, this isn't just some random lady. Um, this is a billionaire Harris uh, from a billion-dollar company here in Memphis. And they found her killer less than a week um, from the time that she was murdered. And uh, within 24 hours, the FBI was literally already on the case. So it was kind of like, it was so quick some people probably didn't even have time to process what was going on anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit later in the week after that, we had a guy go live on Facebook uh, who was shooting people around the city. He ended up shooting four people and injured three people. The four people who was uh, shot, they did die. So, of course, now, here in Memphis, everybody is up in arms, and they're talking about how terrible the city is, and how Memphis is strong, and how we've got to heal the city, blah de blah de blah um, And so, Gabby and I are kind of looking at this, and we've looked at it all week, and we've kind of got, like, some cringe that's, that we feel like is happening. But also, not just cringe... Uh, overt fascism, overt white supremacy, um, and yeah, we kind of want to talk about that. So, uh, you want to kind of talk about the Eliza lady, what we were seeing on the news in regards to that. Yeah, so the lady, um, like KT said, they, uh, put a $50,000 award up for her, but literally less than 24 hours, uh, they had the TBI on there. They had the um, some other federal organization, uh, U.S. Marshals, already yeah. looking for her. And um, if you know anything about missing persons, if you know anybody in your city that's ever gone missing, a regular person, it takes a week sometimes for them to ever do anything. Yeah. And they barely want to post the missing persons until what, a couple days. So, um, yeah, so that, that happened. And... Um, after you know the killer and things were found, you know it, it it was it was time for the white people to shine. It was time for everybody, young and old, uh, liberal and Republican, <laughs> everybody to show their own uh, individual types of ass. Um, particularly, you know, y'all know what we talk about all the time. You know, we talk about the ills of this city. You know, we talk about the crime. We know we talk about the murder. You know, we talk about, you know, these kids are living in war zones. Families and stuff living in war zones. Drive-bys and stuff all the time. Uh, extreme violence they're seeing with their own eyes and all this Every other week. stuff. And we talk about this. And there has never been a campaign to say that Memphis is strong, to say that Memphis needs to heal. The city literally, like, they had all these museums and stuff that was open all Friday for free. For free. So that Memphis can heal. Memphis can heal because apparently this is the worst Memphis has ever been, despite what we know. And really what it showed us is, again, what did we know? Only some people's lives matter. Only some people's safety 
matters because literally the only reason why we're doing it, this is because a rich white woman was kidnapped and murdered and that dude who was riding around shot and killed some white people. And so now we're in a state of emergency. The entire city has to be on the lookout. If people even think you're, quote, unquote, making terrorist threats or whatever, they can report you to the FBI. Folks yeah. getting locked up for stuff they saying on Facebook. And it's a whole thing. And so, of course, there's that. So that's the liberals. Oh, we're, we're Memphis safe. We're, we're, we're all these things. We're Memphis strong. That's what the liberals are saying. And well, Yeah, I was just going to say that, uh, you said that the guy, he killed some white people. No, he literally, he killed one white person. And here's the thing. It wasn't, again, it, again, it wasn't just some random white person that he killed. No, it was a rich white woman who was middle to upper middle class, whose parents were doctors, and she had money as well and worked in the hospital. So it's like, the truth is, like Gabby said, At the end of the day, the only thing that these people care about are other white people who are also upper and middle class. And absolutely, if you if you say even anything on Facebook, they're going to report you directly to the police who will send the FBI to your house and will basically lock you up for, quote unquote, terroristic threats. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's what's going on on that side. And then, you know, for the people who just was waiting to just be able to say something racist, you're getting all the dog whistles. You're getting the dog whistles oh, yeah. from the news. You're getting the dog whistles from the folks on Facebook talking about the animals and the thugs and the lawlessness and the police aren't able to do their job. You know, just, just bringing it all out. And, um... Yeah, like like we said, this is really becoming a time of reckoning because now the white folks are scared. Now, it don't matter. All them little black girls that's been missing for years that we post on Facebook that never get no traction on the news. It don't matter. The little black boys that could have been walking from school and got shot, shot up by a drive-by, that is not a reason to heal. That's not a reason to have a campaign. That's not a reason to shut down the city. But let two white women... Get killed by some black brutes? Oh, well, no. We got to do something. They had a 200 uh, people uh, <laughs> run, like a run thing where they were going to finish running for the lady. With police? Uh, with police and stuff. It was number white people. And uh, they literally did that all over. They did one in Pittsburgh. They did one in Chicago. They did one in Nashville. No, of course we're not saying that that lady deserved to die. We're not saying none of that stuff. What we're saying is actions. We see the actions and we see what this is turning into. We see the conversations that's being had on Twitter and Facebook. These things are becoming covert clan rallies pretty much. Because you got all these white women saying they scared. All these white men using this op- as an opportunity to be like, I told y'all, I said it. And, and what is it going to de- delve into? When you get a whole group of white people that's scared about some black people, what, what's that finna turn into? A KKK rally. Pretty much. So there was something that Gabby had sent to me that we saw on Facebook that is obviously a racist dog whistle. So... Um, Just listen, the lady is talking about Eliza Fletcher, and she goes on and she says, We live in a sinful world with devil's field, but I refuse to tremble for the prince of darkness, because one little word shall fail him. God will win the battle, but until that day comes, something else must change. I long for a world where my little blonde daughter can run with wild abandon at whatever time she chooses. Mm-hmm. And while regular people may look at that and be like, oh, well, she's just she's just relating to it herself. No, that those are racist dog whistles. Mm-hmm. Her saying, my little blonde daughter, her saying uh, that this woman died from darkness. Prince of darkness. Prince of darkness, that is racism. And if you say, well, Prince of Darkness is what they call the devil. Yeah, but here's the thing. We, we're not, we're not, you know, we know, we know. Everybody knows what, what is, what thoughts is coming up in these people's heads. They're just not so saying So ultimately, it what we're saying is, so that's what, the, the main thing that got me was her saying, you know, my little blonde daughter should be able to walk 
you should be able to run outside. That's what everybody's saying. Yeah. A woman should be able to run outside and go for a jog. Absolutely. 100%. We agree 1,000%. Why y'all just bringing this up now? Majority of women in this city cannot run outside regardless. That's literally only in Midtown with them rich people in Central Gardens where you see people just running all times of the day and all times of the night. That has never been the reality for anybody. Y'all do not care about changing the city. Y'all don't care about Memphis getting better. Y'all just want to be shielded from the bad stuff and continue to live your lives the same way they are. Everybody's saying pray. Everybody's saying this. Y'all don't want to change none. There's another uh, racist dog whistle that Gabby screenshotted. Um, and it has a picture of the guy, uh, uh, what's his name? Ezekiel Kelly who went on the shooting spree, and it says, put this POS down. It's time for normal citizens to stand up against the lawlessness. We're dealing with a shortage of police, which, by the way, Memphis has over 2,000 police officers. We're dealing with the shortage of police because they get treated like garbage from these, quote-unquote, woke assholes. No more. Make these animals pay. Huh? But these people aren't racist. These people who only, who in the video of them running down Central Avenue, one of the richest neighborhoods in Memphis, especially downtown or in the Midtown area, were only white people. I could not find a single video where there was a black person running down the street with all them whites. And uh, I don't know if you guys have it, but there's a, a neighborly app or, or the neighborhood app. Um, a lot of cities have it. And as you know, it's just basically a whole bunch of white people who are complaining about people just walking around on the street. The literal, the literal racism, fascism, white supremacy that I saw on that app. Those people should be literally, like, they should just die, to be honest. It was absolutely awful. On top of the fact that, again, that little race, that little 200 whatever, white women were eating that shit up. White women were like, oh, yeah, I'm, uh, you're totally right. I'm going to have to go and walk with someone else now. You should have been walking with someone else to get, from the get-go. Why do you why do you feel so safe in a city that is majority poor who in a city that literally has violence constantly why do you get to feel so safe that, that's not the question this, this, this is not this is the thing this is not especially for black poor people which black people make up over 60% of this entire population yeah. in Memphis. First of all, this is not about black people feeling comfortable. This is not about, this is not our city. We are just the little pawns, the little rodents that help churn out the money for them. They couldn't care less. They couldn't care less your, your, the school that your kids go to got mold and stuff growing in it. They can't care less you got to stand up on your feet 13 hours in the warehouses yep. and working. They couldn't care less that you over here watching behind your back as you hurry up and run into your house with your kids. Yep. They couldn't care less. The city couldn't care less. This is it's showing the real. I'm glad. Bring it all up. Bring it all up because the whole George Floyd thing, everybody had put their little thing on their pictures, but we knew they weren't about it. Literally. Now bring it back out. So ultimately, we said all this to say that this is this is little microcosm thing. It's just a, a smaller picture of the entire pie that is America as a whole. And just this Western world as a whole. Yeah. These people, they can put on facades. They can do this. They can do that. But they show you with their own actions. They do not care about the lives of poor people, specifically poor black people. Let's talk about the water crisis in Jackson. Yep. The people, they cut on the water. The water is dirt brown. You haven't heard Obama say nothing about it. You ain't heard Clinton say nothing about it. AOC, none of these people. Did Joe Biden ever say anything about it? Did he ever say he gonna do anything about it? I don't know, but you just reminded me, Obama, whenever he went and he drank that water. In Flint, yeah. Yeah, like we... We rewatched that, or I rewatched that like uh, two weeks ago, and watching it now, like as an, a a full grown adult, 
it was it was wow. It was absolutely wow to me because what person who has any type of morals, who has any type of empathy would go and do that to people who haven't had clean water in probably decades now? Somebody I mean, the, the president. The president would do that. That was so evil. Like, that was beyond evil. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 the reality of, of life here. If if you're not making money, if you're not white, if you're not, you know, a part of the, these, this upper class, then your life doesn't matter. They would never do that. They would not be over there going to Mar-a-Lago when they get dirty water and the president going over there drinking the dirty water saying, ain't nothing wrong with this. They wouldn't dare. They know where to go. They know where the people have no power. And they know how to gaslight them people into thinking that things are fine. And that's that's America. And that's what we got. That's what we're facing. And that's what we're up against. The good thing about it, though, is a lot of people are seeing the hypocrisy. You know, like we said last week, whiteness, being white, if you're not actively doing the work, you are, you literally can't see nothing. These white people think that we don't see. These white people think that they slick and, you know, they can say what they want to say at the house. Yeah. But they think they slick on social media. But people are, but uh, people all over, black people all over the city, like we see the hypocrisy and we see the double standards. And, and honestly, you know, these are the same people that they say, you know, we need to unite with, that we need to, you know, organize with then we need to you know get the revolution started but you know that they're, they're still in this this fascist state of mind because in, according to them you know their lives matter more than everybody else's and and uh they're not going to deal with the real issues that's causing the problem they just think everybody needs to be put down uh, via guns via uh isolation via just you know being uh, put in jails or whatever so i don't know um I don't know what the, the white leftists would say according to that. I don't know. I want to add, too, that they literally, like, everything that those white racist people do is only affirmed by American values, being individual, uh, going out and pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, that kind of ideology. That is only affirmed by American uh, Western society. And I also want to add... That all of these people, like Gabby was talking about, how they have this campaign going that Memphis is strong, Memphis should heal. Um, Memphis will quite literally never heal. Yeah. Memphis was literally home to indigenous people prior to white supremacists coming over, murdering and raping. And then at that point, indigenous people and or indigenous people are still living here with black people and black people at that point have became like the cotton hub or Memphis became the cotton hub here. And so, yeah, like Memphis will never heal. It just needs to be burned down. That's what somebody put on uh, the, what was it? The thing, the Memphis holler. What can Memphis do to heal? Y'all ain't never talked about none of this stuff ever before. We need to lock people up. We need to invest in the schools. We need to do this and that. The parents need to do Memphis, literally, like, that's something I had to realize in the epiphany I made. Like, especially post-slavery. Yeah. Like, all the black people here were, you know, relegated to specific quarters of living during slavery. After that, they got segregated. We got segregated into our own areas. And now it's the same thing. It's just different areas. Yeah. But it's, it's literally nothing has changed except for the job that we do. And that now that we get money... And uh, we ain't living on the plantation and getting whipped. But literally, the the same dynamics are still here. There, nothing has changed. In order for Memphis to change, especially now, this city is run by Nike, Amazon, International Paper, and DHL. In order for Memphis to uh, heal, number one, every single one of them organizations need to be gone out of this city. And when will that ever happen? No, it will not. So until then, I mean, it's just a sitting duck game because in order for Memphis to heal, the black people, the majority, the most oppressed in this city yep. will have to take power. Yep. And literally create an entire system, a new system that will 
reduce in the oppression, we would hope a uh, communist socialist society and and just get away with capitalism altogether because there's literally no way. Y'all over here asking why are these kids acting up? Oh, it must be the, uh, the, the uh, television shows. It must be the video games. It must be the uh the mu the rap music they listen to. Rap music was created in the uh, late nineteen seventies. So before that time, what what was what was causing the crime in the in America? You know, it couldn't be all the lead that are in these school pipes. You know, it couldn't be that that would cause these children to quote unquote act up. It couldn't be all the poverty or the uh, generational or generations worth of trauma that these children are still carrying around. It couldn't be any of that. No, it's just that you know they don't have a father. That's what those white people always say. Here in Memphis. Yeah. I mean, that, that, make, that puts it back on the individual. Yeah. yeah. If you just had a father in the house, you just literally had a cis male. Racist. With the penis in the house. Yeah. Your life would change. If you just cut off that rap music and you put it on some little. Country. Country. Your life will change. Of course. And, um. You know, not that country it. doesn't talk about, uh, literally, uh, getting drunk and being violent with guns towards their wives and towards their husbands and things like that. No. Yeah. So, even if we look back into, like, the Memphis Massacre, 1886, that we've talked about, like, what, what no rap music there, won't no television, won't no, uh, internet. Um, I just feel like people, they just say these, like, brainless takes because it just, it feels good on the inside. It feels good to be able to point at something and say it's just because you're a bad person and not have to come to grips that this entire thing is evil and corrupt. And there's there's no no justifying it and there's no way out. Um, So, yeah, so that's mainly what we want to talk about and uh, just talk about just how... Like, these fascist views just permeate everyday life. And people wouldn't look at this and say it's fascism. They'll say, oh, no, it's just, you know, these people, they're not even racist. They're just upset. Yeah. They're, they're just upset about what's happening. No. No. This gave them the green light. Them people can go on Fox 13 News on Facebook and just put out the most vile racist stuff you've ever seen in your life because a, a white woman was killed. No one's going to bat an eye. And, and yeah, so this, all this thinking, of course, has to be destroyed. If we, if we plan on doing anything, because how in the world are we going to create a society where everybody wants to help everybody else if people are still thinking this way? And people saying the revolution, the revolution, the revolution, like y'all ain't even got to point one. Mm -mm. Like, majority of, or all of the white people, pretty much 99.99% of all these white people in Memphis think like this. Yep. So, yeah, we have a long way to go. But, yeah, that's pretty much uh, the main thing we want to talk about. Just, just. A rant. Just ranting about that. Like, like KT said, we'll put some links in the description. But uh, it really grinded our gears, and we just had to let that out. Yeah, we were even at the. We went to the doctor's office, and they had on Fox News, and uh, we were watching literally them talking about uh, Elijah and basically how she was murdered and things like that. And something that was interesting that we saw afterwards too that kind of grinded our gears. Yeah, so it was a, uh, a, a commercial that was against Lori Lightfoot. And the commercial was uh, a really low-quality video that had been taken with maybe like a ring camera or something like that. And it was a white lady who was literally being beat by four black people. Okay. And then at the end of it, it was like, it, it was basically implying that Lori Lightfoot didn't know what she was doing, and she's the reason why crime is so high. <laughs> and I kid you not, I just, I just went silent. I just couldn't think of anything, because it was like, you literally just sat up here and talked about the violence that happened to this billionaire rich white lady, and how Memphis needs to heal, and then intentionally put that commercial after to only uh, confirm the racist ideology that these white people are already thinking about. Yeah, so it just, 
we just want to kind of come on here and just rant and just be like, wow, like, what the fuck? These people are literally just saying the quiet part out loud this week. That's what they did. Well, I mean, the jig is up. The jig is up as far as, you know, all this anti-racist stuff, you know, that 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 really didn't help the de- Democrats the way they wanted no. to. And, you know, you know, you know what sales, you know, white supremacy sales. So, yeah, get ready back for the, the old school overt racism. And uh, we're going to get back to the olden days. So, yeah, uh, I think that was pretty much all we wanted to discuss. But uh, if you have any comments, you can leave them in our YouTube. Um, you can hit us up at Building Our PWR. And uh, if you'd like to donate to the work we're doing in the community, you can do so. Link is in the description. If you'd like to join us in person, you can too. Link is in the description. This has been Gabby. And KT. And this has been Building Our Power.